Hey, what's up? Today we're going to cover the most effective opening trap of all. This is a trap that allows you to win the game in only 6 moves and it works across a lot of different popular openings with white and with black. Moreover, I'm going to share with you how you can supercharge this opening trap so that it works even against strong players who are aware of the trap and you can still win. But first off, what am I even talking about? I'm talking about the Tennyson Gambit, which occurs again across different openings, so I'll show you initially just one way to get into it. For example, if black tries out the Scandinavian defense, white can play knight of 3, seemingly blundering this pawn on e4, but after that you go knight to g5, aiming to get this pawn back on the next move, black naturally defends it, you attack the pawn once again, but black is happy to trade it off because it's their extra pawn, so they no longer need to defend it, they take, bishop takes d3, now black is a pawn up, it feels good, the only problem is this knight on g5 that feels a bit annoying, so they want to get rid of it and they play pawn to h6 and that's where you utilize the main tactical motif of this trap. Here comes knight takes f7 and you win the game. So this is a double attack to the rook and the queen, therefore it's black is forced to take, but then after bishop g6 you finish the game in style with this discover check, you grab the queen on the next move, you expose their king and you achieve a totally winning position. Well, it feels good to win the game that quickly. The problem is a lot of players think that it's a hit or a miss. If your opponent falls for the trap, you win quickly. But if your opponent is aware of that or and plays pretty much any other move, not h6, then you're just a pawn down in a bad position and you collapse and lose. But in today's video, I'm going to share with you like the Tennis and Gambit 2.0, how to make it stronger, how to make it work across different openings, and how to make use of it even if your opponent doesn't fall for the trap. First off, let me show you how we can use it across different openings. There are different ways to go about this. Uh, one of the standard ways is to start off with the move pawn to e4, and in this case the tennis and gamut works against black's openings involving the move pawn to d5, because we want to sack our pawn on e4 that way. Therefore, it works against either the Scandinavian defense, where they go pawn d5 right away, or against the French defense where they play e6 first and they follow up with d5 on the next move, or against Karakhan, which is a similar story. Now let's start off with the Karakhan defense. And here, Tennis and Gambit actually works tremendously well. It's not even a risky thing to play it, because it's completely sound. Now, you play knight of 3, all the same moves, pawn to d5, and we basically want to bait them to capture this pawn, so we play pawn to d3, pretending like we just want to trade off on e4, and black is happy to do that, they capture, they hope that you will recapture and they take on d1, and force your king to make a move, which is nice for black, but instead you play knight g5, aiming for our Tennis and Gambit setup. Now, this pawn is hanging, so they trade it off, bishop takes d Three. And here's the beauty of this position. Like, two most played moves by black, by four, which are either knight to f6 or pawn to h6, just lose due to the classical tennis and gambit stuff. So if they play either knight f6 or h6, doesn't matter, like the classical thing works, right? You just pull off this trick, you win the queen, and you win the game. So that's nice. What if black tries something else? The beauty of this position is that besides this knight takes f7 threat, you're actually also threatening this pawn on h7, so you can take your pawn back at the very least and save a nice attacking position. For example, if black plays pawn to e6, or any other move, you can actually go ahead and grab this pawn on h7, why not? You're grabbing a pawn, it's defended by the bishop, therefore black can't take it. From here, the knight can capture on f8, forcing black's king to move, therefore losing the right of castle, and everything's just cool. By the way, if your opponent tries to be fancy and plays bishop e7, trying to make use of this remote position of the knight and maybe trying to capture it down the road, it actually backfires because you can play queen h5 and strangely enough, you are setting it up for the discover check with knight to f6 followed by queen takes h8 checkmate. Quite an evil tactics involving, you know, the knight from h7. And if black tries pawn to g6, now this one pawn to g6, trying to get rid of your attacking pieces, and I think it's actually the most played move, sometimes they actually go knight of 6, which is, you know, completely great for you, because you execute your main threat, knight takes, followed by queen takes h8, you know, winning the rook. But if they instead play pawn to g6, there is a very common tactics here where you just sacrifice a bishop to destroy the pawn shield around the king, and after that it's really easy for you to attack this king. By the way, our knight from f8 is doing a useful job covering this square, therefore king has to go to the middle of the board, but it's so exposed here that it should be really easy for white to finish the game off within a couple moves. For example, you can go bishop f4 to cut off the c7 square so that the king cannot hide there, and then all you gotta do is to just bring your rook to the d-file, so you can castle and play rook d1 or maybe knight c3 and then castle short long side, and you just win within a couple moves. Alright, we've just covered how you completely destroy black if they play pawn to c6 and how you can use tennis and gambit then. 
What about the French defense? Here it's actually trickier, so you really gotta pay attention because a lot of players do it wrong. You gotta you got play knight 3, the same stuff, pawn d5, pawn d3, initially it's all the same, pawn takes, now your opponent still hopes for you to recapture, but all of a sudden you go knight g5, attacking this pawn, so they trade over here, and now, here's a moment of truth. You still attack this pawn h7, by the way, as in the previous example, but if they play pawn to h6, it is useful to remember that when they move the e-pawn forward, our tactics does not work anymore. That's what a lot of players do wrongly, and they just lose games. What's the problem here? If you play knight takes f7, which does not work in this position, then after king takes, and you follow up with the bishop to g6 check, the issue is the king has this square, therefore they don't have to drop the queen, right? So if the pawn were on e7, there would be no defense for, for black, and you would just win the game. But if the pawn moves, the king now has this escape square e7, and from here it defends the, the queen, therefore they don't lose the queen, while you sacrifice the knight for, like, no reason, basically. So, just to summarize, when the pawn has moved, you know, with the e-pawn of black, this sag does not work, but there is another way for white to attack. Does it mean that this variation just refused the tennis and gamut altogether? No, you just attack differently. After h6, you play queen to h5, which is kind of like an advanced version of the scholar's checkmate. And funnily enough, black very often overlooks it. They play knight f6, thinking that they're gaining a tempo attacking this queen, but queen takes f7 is just checkmating one, quite nice. What if your opponent plays better? Instead of knight to f6, first off, they cannot capture this knight, because that would lose the rook on h8, they would be down material, and it will keep attacking, that's clearly winning for you. What else can black play? Well, they gotta somehow counter the threat of queen takes f7 checkmate. If they try g6, that falls to the standard stuff that which we have seen in the previous variation. You can sack your bishop over here and completely expose their king, which will be really easy for you to checkmate down the road. In fact, the most played move by black here is king to d7, which fails to queen takes c6, checkmate in one. So what can black do? They gotta somehow defend this pawn, g6 does not work, perhaps they gotta play queen to f6 and defend the pawn that way. If they play this way, well... Actually, let this be our puzzle of the day. It is white to play and win, and if you can find the winning variation for white, please write it down in the comments below. I think that if you find it yourself, you will also remember it better and will be able to pull it off in our practical games. All right, let's come back to the starting position of the tennis and gamut against the French defense, and it actually can occur through various openings. What if black does not play pawn to h6, but play something else? For example, they play bishop e7, trying to kick off your knight that way, because currently it's attack with this battery of a queen and a bishop. Because the problem with the tennis and gamut is a lot of players only know this single trick, knight takes f7, pulled by bishop takes g6, and if it doesn't work, they just don't know what to do, and they lose. And I think that you can definitely supercharge it, because there are many more tricks and attacking patterns here in the Tennis and Gambit, and if you know them, then you can play it successfully against different moves, against different opponents. That's why I'm sharing with you these different attacking patterns for white. So how about bishop to e7 attacking this knight? Does it mean that you have to move it back or something like this? No, you can support it by playing pawn to h4. And it's actually a pretty strong move, because with this pawn h4, black never really wants to trade off the knight, because then you recapture with a pawn, which opens up your rook, and it's now putting strong pressure along the h-file, and it's just bad for black. You have this strong attack, and black has nothing. So black never really wants to take it, let's take it back. What else can they play? Well, let's say they play h6 right here, still trying to get rid of your annoying knight. Now, you already know the attacking pattern we discussed previously, there is a move queen to h5, which upsets black in this way. So still we're pinning the rook, still we're threatening queen takes f7 checkmate, g6 still doesn't work because of bishop g6, all the same stuff that you're already aware of. Uh, how about bishop takes g5? Well, we know that in this case you recapture with a pawn, and that just creates a lot of pressure. By the way, notice that black is completely undeveloped. All their pieces are still in their starting squares, while you're already developing a massive attack, right? You, you're ready to capture over here, maybe push g6 at some point, you control the h-file, you have these two monstrous bishops attacking all around, you've got this active queen, like you have a lot on your plate and black has nothing. For example, if they play g6 trying to get rid of your queen, then you follow up with the same sacrifice to expose the king, bishop takes, queen takes g6, check to the king, and as the king is so exposed, it's usually easy for you to finish off your attack. For example, in this position you can go rook h3, and this rook lift wins the game within a couple moves, you'll achieve the checkmating position. Alright, so in this position we have seen that h6 fails to queen to h5. 
If he tries bishop e7 attacking your knight, you can actually defend it by playing pawn to h4 and you save nice attacking chances. How about knight to f6? That is actually a correct defense for black and right now there is no immediate trick that you can pull off to win the game. So this pawn on h7 is defended with the knight, therefore he cannot capture it. Knight takes f7 does not work. Once again, let's not forget about that. When the e pawn has moved, this combo does not work anymore, therefore you should not take it. What do you do in this case? Well, still, there is a way for you to maintain your initiative and to claim some compensation for the sacrificed pawn. The move that I recommend to play is queen to e2. By playing this move, you avoid this opposition of queens, which could sometimes let black trade off queens and enjoy an endgame with an extra pawn. You do not want that. You want to attack in the middle game or in an opening. So queen e2 puts your queen opposite to his king, which in some variations creates some sort of tactical combinations. Also, if black ever plays h6, you know, to kick away your knight, you can always drop it back to e4 and still you have this solid position where everything is overprotected and you have a lead in development. In most cases, instead of h6, they play bishop to e7, then you castle, they castle just as well. Feels good for black, but here, here you've got rook to d1, making use of an open file, preparing for bishop takes h7 sacrifice on the next move with the discover attack of the queen. It's actually quite uncomfortable. They have to play some awkward move, something like queen to e8. Then you just develop. And although black is a pawn up, your position is more active. You have more space, more opportunities to attack. So in a real practical game, I'd say that it's definitely playable for white. You've got maybe some knight b5 trick going after this pawn, maybe bishop f4 attacking the pawn that way. If he ever goes h6, you can drop it to e4 so that after an exchange you can trade with you can take back with any piece it's actually pretty good queen takes e4 would establish a battery and threaten queen to h7 checkmate again maybe stockfish can defend perfectly and enjoy his extra pawn but in a real practical game you've got a lot of attacking opportunities here all right, now let's see how it works against the Scandinavian defense. We have covered the Karakan defense, the French defense. Now let's have a look at the Karakan defense. You play this standard tennis and gambit move knight to f3, gambiting this pawn, then knight g5, aiming to take it back. Black goes knight f6, pawn to d3, attacking this pawn once again. They take, bishop takes d3. Now, in this position, a lot of players believe, mistakenly, that like virtually any move for black wins the game, it's just that black should be aware of this trick, knight takes f7. It's certainly not that easy. Well, first of all, like h6 would really lead to this usual knight sacrifice followed by bishop g6 and you win the game. But it's certainly like quite an overstatement that black could win very easily with whatever they play. If they go e6, we have seen this situation previously, right? What you do want to play here is queen e2, opposite you know, putting your queen to a more active square, avoiding potential exchanges of queens, and even though you don't win immediately, but you maintain initiative and you still have chances to attack later on. Another move here in this like, starting position of the tanks and gambit, which seems to be winning for black, refuting the whole thing, is bishop g4. Seems like black is counter-attacking and you have to either drop your knight back or something like that and like why it collapses. But all of a sudden, against bishop g4, you can actually make use of the very same tactics. Knight takes f7 which comes as a complete shock for black. Because if they take your queen, you take theirs. And if, if they after that take it, you enjoy a better endgame. So that's still fine for you. In most cases, however, they actually take your knight, still falling for the same tennis and gambit trap. Bishop g6 followed by queen takes d8 within the game. Now, a little problem with playing e4, aiming for the tennis and gambit, is that although it works against the French defense, Karakan defense, and the Scandinavian defense, it does not work against black's most common move, pawn to e5. So here you cannot force the tennis and gambit anymore. So how do you do that? Well, there is another way to go about this. You can start off with the move knight to f3. And what it does is it takes away the square e5, therefore black can no longer play e5, or else the pawn will be captured, and in most cases your opponent will play pawn to d5, and that transposes exactly into what we want. You then play e4, and you achieved the tennis and gambit possession. Pawn takes, knight to g5, knight f6, pawn d3, and that's exactly what we're aiming at. By the way, I've got another video where I go more in depth into different sidelines, what to do if black tries to move away from the tennis and gambit and plays other moves, so if you have any questions, I'll drop a link below the video, and after watching this video, you can check out that one, so that you will then know tennis and gambit better than 99.9% .9 of your opponents. Finally, not many players know that you can actually use the tennis and gambit as black against white's first move pawn to d4 when white aims for the queen's gambit, which is one of the most common chess openings. You play knight of 6 here and after c4 you play e5, which starts off the very same idea, pawn takes e5, knight to g4, and here it's actually 
a, a quite an evil way to play this because in most cases your opponents think that you're playing the Budapest Gambit which is one of the kind of known positions they still play knight to f3 and in the main lines like goes of like knight c6 just trying to get this pawn back but you instead play d6 you're playing the tennis and gambit style right so attack the pawn that way they're happily trading it off thinking that they're now up a pawn with a great position again the only thing that annoys them is this knight on g4 so they play pawn to h3 but now knight takes f2 wins the game in the very same fashion king takes bishop to g3 check then followed by queen takes d1 winning the queen for extra trolling, if you want to completely humiliate your opponent, instead of bishop to g3, you can actually play bishop c5 with the same idea. It's a discovered attack of the queen on d1. And if they think to themselves, wait a second, I can still defend it with king to e1, you still force it with bishop to f2, forcing the king to move. And after that, you ultimately grab the queen anyway, keep attacking the king and win the game. With that being said, I know that there will always be people who will say that studying opening traps or variations is not a reliable way to improve a chess. And I absolutely agree. That's why I've put together this free masterclass called the best way to improve a chess instantly, where I go more in depth into more serious strategies to become a solid chess player. So if you're curious, check it out right there. Thank you very much for watching. Keep crushing it.